Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack. And in this podcast, we will begin the first part of the cardiovascular system, the blood, and review the major functions and properties of blood. The cardiovascular system is an organ system consisting of the blood, hearts, and blood vessels, such as the arteries, veins, and capillaries. The term vascular is a reference to either the blood or blood vessels, while the prefix cardio means having to do with the heart. We will start our overview of the cardiovascular system with the blood and then continue on with the heart and blood vessels in future podcasts. Another couple of prefixes that refer to blood are hema and hemato. Hematology is the study of blood the tissues that form blood, such as the red bone marrow, and blood disorders. Blood plasma found in the blood vessels and the interstitial fluid found between cells are two fluids that help supply the body cells with their essential materials, such as oxygen and nutrients, as well as help them get rid of wastes, such as carbon dioxide. Blood is actually classified as a type of liquid connective tissue, all connective tissues consist of cells surrounded by an extracellular matrix, and blood is no exception. Except in this case, blood cells are surrounded and suspended by a protein-rich liquid extracellular matrix that we know as blood plasma. Interstitial fluid is the extracellular fluid that surrounds body cells and is continuously replenished and resupplied by the blood with oxygen and nutrients that nourish the body cells. The body cells then release wastes such as carbon dioxide and other metabolic wastes into the interstitial fluid, which then moves these materials into the blood. These wastes are then carried by the blood into the kidneys, lungs, and skin for excretion from the body. Blood has four major functions, transportation, regulation, and two protective functions of immunity and clotting. Blood is able to transport the respiratory gases like oxygen from the lungs to the body cells and in the opposite direction carbon dioxide from the body cells to the lungs, wastes and heats, nutrients from digestion to the body cells, and hormones from the endocrine glands to the body cells. Blood plays a major role in regulating homeostasis. It can help balance pH changes by using chemical buffers that weaken the pH of strong acids and bases. Because blood plasma is about 91.5% water, blood can regulate body temperature by absorbing, transporting, and releasing heat. Blood also plays a role in osmoregulation, balancing the water content of cells by adjusting its concentration of dissolved ions and plasma proteins. Blood plays a role in the immune system through its white blood cells called leukocytes. Leuco, as a prefix, means pale. These cells defend the body against pathogens, which are disease-causing organisms, such as viruses and bacteria or parasites, by consuming and destroying them through phagocytosis. Blood also contains a variety of proteins, such as antibodies and interferon that defend the body against pathogens. Blood can also reduce its loss from the body, called hemorrhaging, as a result of injury through clotting. During clotting, blood thickens up into a gel-like consistency by using its plasma proteins and specialized cells called platelets. In order to analyze the physical and chemical components of blood, it must be sampled. Blood is typically sampled for analysis for most people through venipuncture. In venipuncture, blood is withdrawn from a vein using a tourniquet, needle, and collecting tube. The tourniquet is wrapped around the arm, usually, above the venipuncture site, which is often the median cubital vein, to allow blood to build up in volume inside the vein. The vein then stands out against the skin, making it easier to withdraw blood. A finger stick is another method of blood sampling. 
This is commonly used by diabetics as a way to easily monitor the daily blood sugar. A heel stick is another sampling method that is often used to withdraw blood from infants and children. If one needs to know the amount of oxygen in the blood, an arterial stick can be performed. In an arterial stick, blood is withdrawn from a systemic artery in the wrist or arm, and these are the arteries, of course, which carry oxygenated or oxygen-rich blood. Now let's examine some of the major physical characteristics of blood. Blood is denser and, like the old phrase, really thicker or more viscous than water due to its concentration of proteins within the blood plasma. This higher viscosity can help move blood more slowly through the capillaries, making the exchange of gases, nutrients, and wastes more efficient. Blood makes up about 20% of the body's extracellular fluid and comprises around 8% of the body's total mass. An adult male has a blood volume of 5 to 6 liters, while an adult woman has a slightly lower volume of 4 to 5 liters due to body size differences. Blood has a pH of 7.35 to 7.45, averaging around 7.4 and this is maintained in this narrow range through homeostasis and blood buffer systems. Blood has a bright red color when it is saturated with oxygen, but turns dark red when it is unsaturated. Blood consists of two major components, blood plasma and the formed elements. Blood plasma is the liquid extracellular matrix made up mostly of water and acts like a solvent containing various dissolved chemical substances. The formed elements are the blood cells and cell fragments. When blood is spun in a centrifuge tube, the denser cells collect at the bottom of the tube while the lower density plasma accumulates towards the top. Formed elements make up about 45% of whole blood, while the plasma accounts for the remaining 55%. Most of the formed elements, about 99% of them, are the red blood cells, or RBCs for short. The remaining 1% of formed elements include the white blood cells, or WBCs, and platelets. These two cells have an intermediate density and form what is called a buffy coat layer in between the red blood cells and plasma when centrifuged. Now let's take a closer look at the components of blood. Blood plasma is a straw colored liquid that consists of about 91.5% water and 8.5% solutes. Of the solutes, most, 7%, are proteins. There are a special group of proteins only found in the blood plasma called the plasma proteins that are made by the liver. There are three main types of plasma proteins, the albumins, globulins, and fibrinogen. The albumins make up 54% of the plasma proteins and are the smallest, most abundant of the proteins. They play a role in hormone transports and osmoregulation by helping to regulate osmotic pressure, which affects the filtration and secretion of fluids in and out of the capillaries. The globulins make up 38% of the proteins. They are large proteins that include the immunoglobulins, also called the antibodies specialized immune system chemicals that destroy foreign substances called antigens, including the viruses and bacteria. Other globulins called alpha and beta globulins are used to transport lipids and fat-soluble vitamins. They have a specialized structure consisting of heavy and light chain regions that helps them react specifically to their antigens. Fibrinogen makes up 7% of the plasma proteins and has an important role in the blood clotting reactions called the clotting cascade. 
the reduction and prevention of blood loss is called hemostasis. Fibrinogen is the soluble inactive form of the protein, while fibrin is the insoluble and active form that helps directly form the blood clot. The other solutes in the plasma, accounting for one to one and a half percent of the concentration, include the electrolytes, which are inorganic salts critical to cell function, such as sodium ions, potassium and calcium ions, and magnesium ions, as well as chlorine, hydrogen phosphate, sulfate, and bicarbonate ions. Nutrients from digestion like glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids, respiratory gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen gas, regulatory substances like enzymes, hormones, and vitamins, and a variety of wastes, most of which are from protein digestion, including urea, uric acid, creatine, bilirubin, and ammonia. The formed elements include the three major blood cells, the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The red blood cells, also called erythrocytes, transport oxygen from the lungs to the body cells and carbon dioxide from the body cells back to the lungs. The white blood cells, or leukocytes, are the body's immune system defenders and include a variety of specialized cells. These include the neutrophils, which are the most abundant white blood cell, making up 60 to 70 percent of the white blood cell populations. The lymphocytes, 20 to 25 percent of the white blood cell number. Monocytes, at 3 to 8 percent. Eosinophils, at 2 to 4 percent and the basophils at 0.5 to 1 percent. The basophils are the least abundant. You can remember the order of the white blood cells from most to least abundant using the phrase never let monkeys eat bananas. Platelets or thrombocytes are fragments of larger cells that don't contain a nucleus and these play a major role in blood clotting. In overall abundance, one microliter of blood contains millions of red blood cells, around 4.8 to 5.4 million, hundreds of thousands of platelets, from 150,000 to 400,000, and thousands to tens of thousands of white blood cells. These are the largest cells within the blood that also contain a nucleus. These cells number typically between 5 and 10,000, but the numbers can increase specifically by type based upon the type of infection or illness that the body is fighting against. The amount of blood volume measured by percentage occupied by the red blood cells is called the hematocrit. The normal hematocrit range for adult males is between 40 and 54 percent, average of 47 percent, and for females, 38 to 46 percent, with an average of 42 percent. This higher value in males is because men contain a higher concentration of the hormone testosterone, which triggers the production of the hormone erythropoietin, or EPO, that activates red blood cell formation. If hematocrit levels drop, that may indicate anemia, which is a significantly low red blood cell count. Polycythemia is the opposite condition, where there is an abnormally high number of red blood cells, with a hematocrit of 65 or higher. This is caused by dehydration, or tissue hypoxia, which is low oxygen levels in the body cells, resulting in an increase in the number of red blood cells to try to raise the oxygen level. As the number of red blood cells increase, Blood becomes more viscous, which increases blood's resistance and makes it more difficult to transport through the vessels and for the heart to pump. This can lead to hypertension, 
which is high blood pressure, and also raises the risk of stroke.